Now we will tackle an airplane simulator. In three dimensions, the state of an airplane in flight is specified by three position coordinates, x, y, and z, and their rates of change, x prime, y prime, and z prime. You also need to keep track of orientation, and there are three ways to keep track of an airplane's orientation, using Euler angles, direction cosines, or quaternions. Each of these methods has its own problems. None of them are simple. Using Euler angles, there are three angles that specify a series of rotations that transform the reference coordinate frame to an airplane-based coordinate frame. And updating the angles is a tricky business. However, things are much simpler in two dimensions, as there are only two position coordinates, x and y, and there is only one possible axis of rotation, the z-axis, and the orientation of the airplane is specified by a single angle, its pitch angle, and it's a simple affair to update it. Needless to say, we'll simulate a 2D airplane. The equations of motion for the airplane follow from Newton's second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration, and Newton's second law for rotation, torque equals angular acceleration divided by the moment of inertia. The equations are shown P sub x double prime equals F sub x divided by m. P sub y double prime equals F sub y divided by m. And alpha double prime equals the torque divided by the moment of inertia. F is the sum of all the forces acting on the airplane. And T is the sum of all the torques acting on the airplane. So what are these forces and torques? The forces acting on the plane are gravity, thrust, lift, and drag. We'll use the simple gravity model, that is, the force of gravity will produce a downward acceleration of the plane of minus 10 meters per second per second. Thrust is programmed, so we will specify the thrust directly for each moment of the flight. Lift and drag are aerodynamic forces, and it's complicated, if not impossible, to determine exactly what they are as they act on every surface of the plane. However, there are simple models, and we will use the simplest. Our model for the force created by lift is given by this equation. The lift force equals one-half times d, the density of air, times the velocity of the plane squared, times s, which is the surface area of the wing, times the lift coefficient, Cl. All of these terms are self-explanatory, except for the lift coefficient, which we'll look at now. When an airplane flies through the air, its velocity vector is usually not perfectly aligned with the center line of the plane. In the graphic, the plane is in level flight so that its velocity vector is perfectly horizontal. However, the plane itself is pitched slightly up as shown, so there is an angle between the velocity vector and the center line. This angle is called the angle of attack. The lifting power of an airplane's wings is critically dependent upon the angle of attack, and this is reflected in the lift coefficient used in the lift calculation. The red graph shows the dependence of the lift coefficient on angle of attack for a typical real airplane. So at minus 5 degrees, the lift coefficient is 0. It increases linearly to 1.5 at 10 degrees, levels off at 15 degrees, and begins falling at 20 degrees angle of attack. The typical angle of attack for an airplane in level flight is 5 degrees, and for our airplane, the lift coefficient is 1 at 5 degrees. The black line shows a piecewise linear approximation to the red graph, and the MATLAB code calculates the approximation, and that's what we'll use in the simulation, that is, the calculated approximation. I'll let you puzzle over the code. It is only good for an angle of attack between minus 5 and 15 degrees and it uses just two of the linear components with a breakpoint at 7 degrees. Since the approximation is good only up to 15 degrees, a single line would have worked about as well, but the piecewise linear technique is much more flexible.
drag is also dependent on angle of attack, and in our model is calculated using the same formula with the lift coefficient replaced by the drag coefficient. The relationship between lift coefficient and drag coefficient for a typical airplane is shown in the graph, along with a piecewise linear approximation to the drag coefficient that is used in our simulation. The MATLAB code to the right computes the drag coefficient using the piecewise linear approximation. Thus far, we have not discussed torques on the airplane. And here is the discussion. We will assume that gravity, thrust, lift, and drag do not create any torques. That makes that simple. And also, we don't have any way to control the plane other than program thrust. Since we're in two dimensions, the plane cannot go left or right. It can only go up and down. And the airplane up-down control mechanism is the tail elevator. When the tail elevator is raised, it creates a downward force on the tail of the plane, which creates a torque which pushes the tail down and the nose up, and the plane pitches up. We will program the tail elevator directly to control the pitch of the airplane. To simplify the model, or to simplify the programming, we will program the force on the tail directly. That is, the value of elevator sub i will be the up or down force created by the tail elevator at time ti. The code shows the update equations for the pitch angle alpha and the rate of change of the pitch angle alpha prime. Here are some of the programming sticky wickets for the application, or as we like to call them, finer points. We will start the airplane traveling in the plus x direction and we'll assume that it flies only in the plus x direction, as the only way it could fly in the minus x direction would be by pitching up more than 90 degrees and we're not investigating the extremes of the flight envelope. So we can calculate the angle of the velocity vector using the MATLAB arc sine or a sine function and the angle of attack as shown in the first two lines of code. The airplane thrust is directed along the airplane center line and is resolved into x and y components using the airplane body angle alpha as shown. Lift is perpendicular to velocity, not the center line. So it is resolved into its x and y components using the angle of the velocity vector, rotated 90 degrees clockwise, as shown. And the same for drag. Drag is opposite to the velocity vector and is resolved into its x and y components using the angle of the velocity vector, rotated 180 degrees clockwise, as shown. So now we're ready to take it for a spin. We'll start with level flight. In order to fly level, the airplane lift upward must equal the force of gravity downward. So the lift force must equal 10 times the mass of the plane. We'll assume that the airplane is flying with an angle of attack equal to 5 degrees, so that the lift coefficient is 1. Using the numbers shown, the velocity necessary to generate the required lift is calculated as 29.8 meters per second, or about 65 miles per hour. Now we calculate the drag at that speed using the drag formula, and the result is 7,000 newtons. So we need a thrust of 7,000 newtons to maintain the velocity for level flight. So we try those numbers. And how does it work out? Well, if you look at the graph, it doesn't look too good at first glance, but if you notice the scaling, the airplane traveled 3,000 meters horizontally and only went up uh, about 25 meters, so that's not too bad. But we'd like to do a little better, so we tweak the values, and we come to, for level flight, a velocity of 28.5 meters per second and a thrust of 6,400 newtons.
Now we want to try a pitch up maneuver, so we program the elevator as shown. First we apply a downward force. This force generates a counterclockwise torque that accelerates the rotation angle in the counterclockwise direction, and the plane starts to pitch up. And since there are no other torques on the plane, the plane will continue rotating till a counter torque is applied. So we immediately apply a counter torque to stop the rotation at the desired pitch angle. We are hoping that the plane will begin to climb. When we reach, or anticipate reaching, the desired altitude, we apply an upward torque to rotate the plane back to level and a downward torque to stop the rotation. The code for programming the elevator is shown. The graphs show the effect on the pitch angle rate and on the pitch angle. So our commands affected the pitch angle as we anticipated. However, it remains to be seen how the overall trajectory of the airplane was affected. And, in fact, the plane didn't climb, it went into a dive. When the plane pitched up, it lost horizontal thrust as the thrust was directed downward. So the horizontal velocity slowed, and while the angle of attack and hence lift coefficient were increased, it did not compensate for the loss of horizontal velocity. And the plane rose briefly and then slowed down and began to fall due to loss of lift. The solution was to increase the thrust as the plane climbs, and doing that, we get the desired result. The assignment is as usual to program the sim and to match the results in the video.